Good morning, folks. Good morning. Welcome to church. We could do with, uh, well, some ice lollies or something, can't we? I think it's a lovely day. Um, great to have everyone here. Welcome. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Richard Turl. I'm uh, one of the leaders of the church here, and I'm going to be leading us through the whole service uh, this morning. Uh, in our church, we have uh, a number of small midweek groups. They're called growth groups. Uh, and we were together um, this week on, on Thursday night, and uh, we were looking at, uh, we, we just reeled off all the names of Jesus, Jesus' names and Jesus' titles. There's so many in the Bible, and they're so rich and deep in meaning. Uh, and we find one of them in Revelation chapter 19. Uh, Revelation uh, says, I saw a heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. And that rider on that white horse is the commander of the armies of the Lord. It's, it's Jesus. And he's described there, he's named there as faithful and true. And that's who Jesus is, isn't it? To us, he is faithful and true. Uh, in him, we see God's faithfulness so clearly to us. Uh, and we're going to sing a couple of songs that uh, reflect uh, on that theme now. So let's uh, stand and sing as the band leaders. We're going to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness and When Peace Like a River.
Let's take a seat. And let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. And we thank you that in Jesus, our sins have been dealt with. We've been forgiven. We've been set free. We've been adopted into your family. And Father, you have welcomed us home. We know where we're going. We know where we're heading. And we know that you're with us every step of the way. Father, we thank you for that. We pray that you would bless our time together this morning. Help us to worship you. Help us to focus on you. Help us to lift our eyes to you. And we pray you would speak to us. You'd feed us. You'd encourage us. You'd spare us on that we can better live and serve the Lord Jesus. Amen. Right, well, we're uh, taking a look at the book of Exodus. We've been looking at Exodus through the spring and the summer. We've been looking recently at the Ten Commandments. Uh, and we're going to turn there now and have our, our first reading um, while the kids are still with us, just so uh, kids can hear uh, what we're up to uh, in the service. So uh, we're going to turn to Exodus chapter 20. And I'm going to read verses 1 to 11. So these are the, the Ten Commandments. Uh, these words have uh, massively shaped uh, the Western world, especially our country. And uh, here's Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 11. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Uh, well, it's time for um, the kids to go to their groups now. So um, we've got Sunday school uh, over in the main building. Uh, and for the little ones, uh, we've got creche. And just uh, for this week and perhaps for the weeks to come, we're just trialling uh, having creche out the back there uh, where the little tents are and things. Um, so uh, if kids, if you want to uh, head to your Sunday school groups, who's leading Sunday school to Gareth and Alice? Great. So if you want to head towards Gareth and Alice, and um, for parents with little, little ones, if, uh, if you want to make use of the creche at the back, feel free to do that. Let's pray for them. Father God, we do thank you for the children and young people in our church family. They're very precious to us, Father, and we pray that you would teach them this morning. Uh, we pray whether they're in Sunday school, in creche, whether they're sat in the congregation, Lord, that you would speak to them, that you would show them your son, Jesus, and we pray that each one would know you personally and love you dearly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I just got um, one uh, notice for us. Uh, lots of obviously lots of change happening in the in the life of the church, and um, just to say that uh, as a leadership, we have a plan for September 2021 um, for the way that Sunday services uh, will work. We're working on other aspects of church life at the moment, but particularly uh, we've communicated a load of stuff about Sunday services. Uh, from September the, the 5th onwards. And that went out on a church email uh, this week, I think. Um, so if for some reason you've missed that information,
information. Uh, it was, uh, we talked about it at United Growth Group as well. But if for some reason you've missed that information, please come and talk to me and I'll make sure you get it because there's quite a lot there uh, about our plans for the future. And they're kind of, they're plans for September, but if we're restricted at that point, they are ultimately the plans that we have for whenever we're not restricted. So it's quite important that we all know uh, what's going on. And we'll communicate more through the summer in terms of other aspects of, uh, of church life. Uh, so please uh, just come and grab me um, at the end and we'll make sure everyone is up to date and knows what's going on. Let's uh, spend some time praying together. Father God, we want to come before you this morning and thank you for your goodness to us as a church. Through this uh, crisis that we've uh, experienced, Father, you've sustained us You've been patient with us. You've provided for us. You've united us together. You've defended us. And you've enabled us as a church to get through and even to make progress in the faith and to make steps forward into our community. And Father, we are so thankful to you for your goodness to us in this season. Father in heaven, we don't deserve your kindness and faithfulness to us. But kind you have been, faithful you remain. And we praise and thank you today, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, at the same time, we come before you, humble because of your mercy to us. We've needed it. Even today, this morning, even this week, our sins have been many. We've wandered from you and your word. We've disregarded wisdom. We've turned to foolish ways. We've sought to be satisfied with other things rather than finding our lasting joy in you. Father, we pray that you would forgive us our many sins against you and against other people. And we pray that we would know the power of Jesus' blood to cancel sin, to cleanse us from sin, to turn aside the condemnation which should be ours. Help us to know your grace and help us to live in the light of it. Amen. Father, we thank you that this verse is true of us. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that we have heard the gospel, that we have been given grace to believe, to receive the Lord Jesus, that you have given us new birth and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. Father, we pray that you would help us to be shaped by that gospel, to be people who forgive as we were forgiven, to be those who love as we have been loved by you. Father, help us to be people who speak that gospel message. We long to see people worshipping you. So we pray that you'd make us bold to speak about you. And Father, we do pray for those who are suffering and struggling in our church family at the moment, physically, emotionally, socially, or spiritually. Lord, we pray that you'd give us strength energy, patience, and a humble trust in your goodness, your providence, your care, your plan, and your ways. Father, your ways are higher and better than ours. Pray you'd help us to trust them. Help us to persevere. Help us to make use of our suffering as a means to draw nearer to you, to recognize our humble human weakness, and to lean more heavily on you for your fatherly care. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to um, fast forward a little bit in the Bible to uh, Deuteronomy. So Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Uh, and I'm going to read uh, the commandment that we're going to look at in a moment, but from Deuteronomy, because the commandments are repeated in Deuteronomy chapter 5.
So Deuteronomy ch chapter 5, here are the Ten Commandments again. Um, and uh, we're going to read from verse 12. Uh, and we see the same command here, the command about the Sabbath. But here it comes with a slightly different reasoning. See if you can spot it. Uh, so uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. We'll take a look uh, at that in a moment, uh, more particularly the, the, the things that we see in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, but we're going to sing a song before we do that. So our band are going to come up and uh, lead us as we sing a, a, again another song about God's faithfulness to us. take a seat uh, and if you want to move into the shade if you're getting a bit warm or if you need to grab a, a drink or whatever and um, take a moment uh, I'm gonna have one <laughs> hopefully it'll be like this through the whole summer <laughs> we'll see uh, 
Now, if you want to turn back to Exodus 20, that's where we're going to be. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 uh, and picking up at, at verse 8, uh, the Sabbath command there. Uh, there have been times throughout uh, the sort of, uh, what is it, 2020 to 2021 now, uh, that whole thing <laughs> uh, that we've gone through together. There's been times throughout that when I have felt profoundly weary. Uh, I don't know about you, um, but uh, for, for many people, it f- has felt at times like all areas of life <laughs> have got more complicated, more stressful, just generally more uphill, whether it's family life, or it's working life, or it's just life in the community, normal things we would have uh, been doing. Everything seems to have been uh, disrupted. Uh, there are things that would have uh, refreshed us, would have replenished us, would have encouraged us that have been taken away, uh, whether that's for a little while or for a, for a long time. Maybe we've not been able to see family or, or been able to do the kind of normal things that we would do to be refreshed, being out, going somewhere, doing something, maybe a leisure center or something like that that's been closed. But just the normal things have been taken away. Uh, but even aside from all of that, if we just just kind of move aside from 2020, 2021 for a moment, just generally in life, we get tired, don't we? Uh, I don't know about you, but by the end of a day, normally, uh, I'm tired. You know, we get tired, don't we? And we sleep and then we head off into a, another day and we do a load of stuff and, uh, and get tired again. Um, but sometimes there are particular seasons of our lives, aren't there, where we, we, we just get run down. Uh, we, get, we get worn down, we get run down, we get exhausted uh, and sometimes feel uh, defeated uh, and deflated. And for, for all of those situations, we find that we need rest. That's what we need. We need rest. And God has got a lot to say about both work and rest. The Bible says a lot about both of those subjects and the the Sabbath is a part of all of that, perhaps in ways that uh, we wouldn't necessarily expect. Now, I realize um, that this is a massive, massive subject. The Sabbath uh, covers the whole sweep of the Bible, uh, Genesis to Revelation. It's all over uh, the whole thing uh, and it's an important subject. It's also a secondary uh, subject on which uh, Bible-believing Christians, that genuinely Bible-believing Christians disagree Uh, on this subject, sometimes in big ways and sometimes uh, in kind of detail kind of ways. So uh, I've written um, a four-page document uh, on the whole subject, uh, which just kind of outlines my view on on the Sabbath and Sunday and the Lord's Day. Uh, And that's, I've given that to the elders and deacons, they have a look at that. I doubt any of them have read it. Um, (laughs) No, they they have, in fairness, kept saying, no, I have read it. Uh, No, they've they've all got that. And anyone is welcome to, to, if you want to get in touch, I'll send you that, quite happy to do that. Um, But then I've also boiled that down to a one-page summary, which is on that table there. There's a whole load of copies of that. You can take that away if you want to go and think more and just uh, read. Very happy to chat about this subject. But we're, uh, we live in a weary world, don't we? Especially at the moment, we live in a weary world and into all of that enters the Sabbath. So we're going to see uh, three things about the Sabbath uh, this morning and then uh, we'll, we'll kind of rattle through that fairly quickly and then we'll get to three practical implications uh, for us all. So uh, the first thing uh, is this one. Uh, it's the old clickers. That's the one. So um, Sabbath day broken. <laughs> now that is the story of the Old Testament part of the Bible, Sabbath day uh, broken. Uh, The Sabbath was a serious deal uh, for God's people uh, and for God. Uh, You'll uh, you'll probably notice that in Exodus 20, uh, in verse 11, the reasoning for the Sabbath, it's grounded in creation, isn't it? It's grounded in what God did in creation. He, 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 if you like, he worked uh, for those six days creating and then he ceased from working and rested Uh, on the seventh so it's grounded in creation Uh, we saw in Deuteronomy didn't we that it's it actually is different isn't it Uh, anyone tell me what how was the the command grounded in the Deuteronomy chapter 5 it wasn't about creation it was about anyone notice that Uh, yeah rest yeah and a particularly particular experience of God's people Exodus, yeah, that's right, yes, yeah, so, so it was grounded in, look, you, you've been rescued, you've been freed from, from slavery, 
uh, and it talks about how they ought to rest and, and allow others to do uh, the same. So it's, it's really grounded, important. It was a special day. Uh, it was a day to cease from your work, uh, a day to rest, a day to stop. Uh, uh, on the seventh day and even even during uh, the busy seasons of harvest and and plowing you imagine uh, it was like all hands on deck this is a busy time of year but still uh, God specifically told them even in those times to stop uh, on the seventh day and in fact the death penalty uh, was in place for anyone who broke the Sabbath by working on it so it's a big deal uh, the, the Sabbath was also, and uh, not just serious, but it was also a sign. Uh, the Bible is um, structured by things called covenants, uh, agreements that God makes with his people. I believe that there's a covenant with Adam in Genesis. Uh, there's a covenant with Abraham. There's a covenant uh, with, with, with Noah. Uh, there's a covenant uh, here with God's people in Exodus uh, through Moses. We call it the Mosaic Covenant. There's a covenant with David, King David. And then in the New Testament, there's, of course, the new covenant that comes through Jesus. Uh, and these covenants have signs attached to them. So uh, no, the Noah covenant, the sign is the, the rainbow in the sky. Uh, but the sign of the, this covenant here, the, what we call the Mosaic covenant, the covenant to God's people through Moses, the sign of the covenant was the Sabbath day. That's what Exodus 31 says. You can read it later. It's, it says that this is the sign of the covenant. Uh, the Sabbath was also given to God's people in a particular season. Uh, so it was given to them as, as a nation. They were the nation of Israel. Uh, and they were living, or they were meant to be living, under God's laws. A nation living under God, God's laws, that's what we call a, a theocracy. Uh, that, that was a particular uh, season in, in the story of the Bible. The Sabbath was always meant to be a gift. We came across this um, a good few weeks ago now. We looked at Exodus 6, chapter 16, didn't we? I don't know if you remember way, way back. And, and God provided bread for them, uh, manna from heaven and food. He provided for them and he gave them this food. And we said, you know, th th that food was a picture of God giving. God is a generous God. But he also says to them, I've given you the Sabbath. It was a, it was a gift for God's people. It was never meant to be a, 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 an awful thing or a burdensome thing. It was a, a good gift from a good God. And the point of the Sabbath was simply to stop. That's what it means. That's what the word means. It means to cease. It means to, to stop. And here's the trouble. They stopped stopping, didn't they? Think about that for a minute. <laughs> what does that mean? They stopped, they stopped stopping, didn't they? They were meant to stop on the Sabbath day. But they stopped doing that and they started working on the Sabbath and actually misusing and abusing the Sabbath in all sorts of ways. And so... Old Testament, Sabbath day broken. Uh, all the way through, God's people broke the Sabbath, and that wasn't a good thing. Uh, but then the second thing that we see is Sabbath rest fulfilled in Jesus uh, in the New Testament. Jesus uh, kept the Sabbath uh, on that particular day. He, he, he kept the Sabbath. Um, he, he would have been found in the synagogue. Uh, by then, the Jews had got into this pattern of meeting together in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So that's where Jesus headed on the Sabbath, uh, down to the synagogue. And he got into all sorts of controversies uh, because he healed people uh, on the Sabbath. The religious leaders uh, of the time didn't like that. Um, they built up this whole system of legalistic rules around the Sabbath, which God hadn't commanded, but they kind of added them on over time. Uh, and Jesus, again, re-emphasized, look, this is a gift. <laughs> God's given you this for your good. It's a, it's a gift. Just like God had said, I, I, he's given it to them. And Jesus said, I, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, and the Sabbath is a gift for people. Sabbath day rest in the Old Testament. You know, it always pointed forward to the rest that they were hopefully going to have in the promised land. The, the, the Bible talks about this idea that they would get there and they'd settle down and remove their enemies and, and they'd have rest in the promised land. But then uh, that, that Sabbath day rest points even further forward to ultimate rest that we find in and through Jesus. Uh, Matthew 11, uh, 28 uh, is a famous and well-loved Bible verse, isn't it? Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary, yeah. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you 
rest. And he goes on to talk about a rest for the soul, a spiritual rest that we can find uh, in Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, complicated part of the Bible, a big, quite a big chunk of uh, uh, early chapters of Hebrews. But Hebrews chapters 3 and 4 talk about how when we have faith in Jesus, when we believe the good news about Jesus, we find rest. We find the rest of salvation. Uh, we find rest for our souls, uh, the rest that comes from the forgiveness uh, of our sins. Uh, and then ultimately, an ultimate rest forever. Uh, with Jesus. Now we live in a, in a frantic world, don't we? Uh, and people have found that, haven't they? That actually sometimes some of the restrictions on our lives have slowed us down and we've realised how frantic it was. Uh, but also we live in a weary world. Uh, we live in a world where you're constantly being told you've got to achieve, you've got to perform. It's all about you and it's all about your performance and what you do. You're, we're constantly told that we can be whoever we want to be. Actually, that's quite <laughs> wearisome and tiring. And we're often told as well that we are what we do. Our, our identity becomes so bound up in our work and the things that we do and achieve. And we feel we have to earn our place and earn our status. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus comes along and he says, no, 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 no. It's all about what I've done. It's not about what you do. Doing is important. But it's not about that. It's about what I have done. So come and find rest in me. Sabbath rest fulfilled in Jesus. And then the third thing that we see is uh, Lord's Day given in the early church. Days are, um, uh, are really important for us uh, at the moment. They're a big deal for us. Uh, I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and so days are everything. What uh, day is it, Daddy? What day is it? Uh, what day of the week is it? Uh, is it uh, a Saturday, as they call it, or is it a school day, or is it church day? Or uh, How many days until? How many days until my birthday? How many days until my sister's birthday? How many days until your birthday, Daddy? How many days until Christmas? How many days until Easter? How many days until the school summer holidays? Uh, there are just so many things to do with days. It's so important. How many sleeps until we go? We often do sleeps. How many sleeps until we go see uh, Granny and Granddad? Uh, there's just so many ways in which days are important to kids. And we're gradually getting to the point where the, uh, the eldest actually knows the order <laughs> of the days and stuff. There's someone in the village uh, who always stops him and says, uh, what day is it today? And has been teaching him the days of the week and we get them uh, all in order. Occasionally we still get muddled up. But days are so important for us. Uh, and Jesus uh, came and lived and died on a cross. And three days later, he rose again on the first day of the week, on a Sunday. Uh, and that day became the day of new life. If you like, it's, it's resurrection day because Jesus rose again on that day, on the first day of the week, uh, on a Sunday. I know we think of Monday as the first day of the week, but for them, Sunday was the first day uh, of the week. It's a day of celebration. And increasingly amongst God's people, it became known as the Lord's Day. A and that is the most significant day in the week for Christians. Now here I want to say something which I realize we may well disagree on, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't think that Sunday is a Sabbath day. Let me say that again. I don't think that Sunday... The Lord's Day, Resurrection Day, is a Sabbath day. Now let me briefly explain why I say that. Remember back to uh, the Sabbath in the Old Testament. The Sabbath was on the seventh day, wasn't it? That's very important. The Sabbath was on the seventh day. Uh, it was on a, a Saturday, as it, beca it became. Uh, it was the sign of the uh, covenant through Moses, the Mosaic covenant uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, and it was given for a particular season in the Bible story, uh, as God's people were a, a physical nation, Israel, uh, in the land. Uh, it was given uh, to them for that season. Uh, Paul, in the New Testament, reflects back on the Sabbaths, and he refers to them as a shadow of the things to come uh, in Jesus. How was the Sabbath seen by the early church? How did they view the Sabbath? Well, when Paul is talking about different days of the week in Romans 14, he basically says that there isn't a, a special day. You know, you, you can 
Uh, if you want to, a day can be special uh, to you. But in, in Romans 14, Paul makes that whole issue of days not even a secondary issue, but actually a kind of tertiary kind of conscience. Make your mind be decided in your own mind, um, but that's down to, to you. And he says, let's not get into an argument between each other um, about that. Now, I, I, d I just don't think that Paul could say that if actually the Sunday was a Sabbath day. I think if, if that was still the case in his time, then he wouldn't have been able to make that argument in Romans 14. The early church never argued that Sunday was a Sabbath day. They, they didn't make that connection. And so I believe that the Lord's Day, Resurrection Day, Sunday, it is not a Sabbath day, but <laughs> it is an important day. It's an important day. Why? Well, all sorts of reasons, but one is that Sunday uh, is the most ideal and the most appropriate day for us to meet together as God's people. We're encouraged and commanded to do that, aren't we? To meet together as God's people. Uh, and Sunday is the most uh, ideal day to do that, uh, partly because of the culture that we live in. We're relatively free and available on a Sunday more so than other days. Relatively, depends on your circumstances. Uh, but it's also the most appropriate day because it's the Lord's Day. It's Resurrection Day. It's a day of celebration for us as Christians. So where does that leave us uh, as we close? Three uh, very practical things for us. Uh, where does that leave us? The first thing is rest in Jesus. This is the most important thing. We live in a weary, weary world uh, in general. Uh, we know that. But particularly in the last year or so, there has been many burden burdensome things going on uh, in our lives. Many of us have felt worn down and weary. And into all of that, Jesus comes along and says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And the rest um, there that Jesus describes is, is a rest from, uh, at least partly, it's a, it's a rest from trying to earn God's favor. You know, trying to uh, merit God's love. Jesus comes along and gives us rest from all of that. We don't need to do that. We can rest in Jesus. He's our refuge. He's rescued us. Uh, and so we can rest in him. But also, uh, for, for many of us uh, sat here today, it's in the storms of life, isn't it? Some of you have gone through some pretty awful things <laughs> recently. And it's in those storms of life where we find that we can rest in Jesus and find shelter and refuge in him. So that's the first thing, rest in Jesus. The second thing is rest one day per week. We talked a, a little bit about this in, in Exodus chapter 16. Uh, Ariana Huffington uh, is a Greek-American author, co-founder of the Huffington Post, uh, and she wrote this. Uh, Too often we treat rest as merely the absence of work or something that gets in the way of reaching our goals. In reality, hard work and deliberate rest are partners. Uh, each sustains and supports the other. Rest helps uh, restore our me uh, mental and physical well-being and gives us energy, focus and resilience and helps us to be more productive. I think that's the Bible's perspective. Both work and rest are important. They're partners. They feed each other. And actually rest fixes us up ready so that we can carry on uh, with our work. Rest in one day a week is not wasted time. Uh, it's not dead time. Sometimes we're tempted to think that, I think, aren't we? And again, it's partly our culture tells us that, oh, you know, why bother? You know, just work. Get stuff done. <laughs> Be productive. Actually, rest isn't dead time. It's not wasted time. You know, busy people, busy people rest despite the busyness. <laughs> Uh, they don't rest because there's like nothing to do. They, they know full well there's so much to get done. There's so much I could be doing. Uh, life is so busy. There's so many demands. There's so many things coming my way. But busy people in the midst of all of that, despite all of that, rest. Because they know that rest is best. So I realize that has uh, 
connotations anyway. Rest is best. <laughs> You'll remember that, won't you? Um, so, but they know that's right, isn't it? People, busy people don't rest because they know what to do. They rest because they know that they need to rest so that they can then go on to work more productively. And that's what life is like, isn't it? You're constantly harassed. There's a pinging phone and the overfull inbox and there's always demands and calls for your attention and time and there's always uh, deadlines to meet and all the rest of it. And in, t- in the midst of all of that, busy people rest. Rest is um, a proactive thing. It's not a passive thing. Sometimes we think, oh, it's just like horizontal, right? You know, it's just a kind of passive thing. But no, rest is proactive. Uh, even in the Old Testament Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath was a rest from your work. It wasn't a rest from absolutely everything, but it was a rest from your work. It was a proactive resting time, a, a time um, not necessarily to be totally inactive, horizontal, if you like, uh, but it was a rest nonetheless. You know, I think that rest one day a week is deeply, deeply rebellious. I wonder if that will motivate some of us to do it. I I genuinely think that that, that rest one day a week is deeply rebellious in a culture that merges rest and work and and, and, and harasses us all the time and and, and makes us feel like we ought to be working the whole time. Into all of that, we rebel by saying, no, (laughs) actually, no, I'm going to stop and I'm going to rest. We uh, we went up to Hull, uh, as many of you know, in that half term, went up to see family. And uh, we were driving up there, and we thought um, it was going really well. Kids were a bit restless in the car, so we thought, okay, uh, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll pull over service station. There's one of those big uh, plasticky, plasticky, and like quite sort of scaffold poly kind of play area things. And uh, they got their gym jams on already, and they got their, those little plastic crocs on as well. And there was static everywhere. It was like tss, 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 as they were going around all these slides and stuff. It was like the whole thing. Poppy's hair was like this <laughs> by the end of it. And uh, so we thought, right, great. We've done that. We've worn them down. We'll get them now in the car, and they'll just be nice. And, and then we can just do the, the whole run in one go. And we got, what, 10 minutes out of the service station. Massive traffic jam. Uh, and uh, it turns out, no one was particularly hurt, the guy's slightly injured, but basically everyone was all right. But it turns out what happened is two lorries had collided. These lorries were full uh, of uh, tomato puree and olive oil, and the road was covered in tomato. Did anyone hear about that on the radio? People knew it. There were all sorts of jokes being made about Spaghetti Junction. and What was it, Simon Passata or something? I can't remember. Anyway, he'll tell you later. Uh, but th- so, so we, w- we absolutely, so in the end, I'd never seen this before, but it, it w- been in other traffic jams, but they actually turned us round and took us back, and eventually we got to Hull. That journey was like that. The journey uh, coming uh, back the other way was the, the classic parental journey that you want you know what I mean like they were just because they'd had like two or three busy weeks you know busy here and then busy there seeing everyone they'd had a lot of fun and a lot of excitement and we got in the car and pretty much before we'd even got to the Humber Bridge which isn't far they were just like (laughs) like that you know totally smashed gone like completely oblivious to the world and they were crashed out in the back uh, and it was lovely, actually, and we just did it in, in, in one run, and that is the parental dream, isn't it? Uh, but so we, 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 we drove along, and, and as we're going along, of course, they are totally out of it. They don't know what's going on. They don't know where they are. Uh, they can't uh, drive. Well, they shouldn't be, anyway. Uh, <laughs> it would be interesting to see them, two of them try and work that one out. But they can't drive. They don't know... Uh, they know that Hull's not round the corner, but they don't know where they are. They, they can't navigate. They can't use a phone. They can't use a sat-nav. Dare I say, they can't even use uh, a map. They don't know how to get their way home. They're just smashed <laughs> in the back of the car, completely crashed out, with no idea what's going on. They are entirely dependent on Dad at that point. That's right, isn't it? Totally dependent entirely dependent on dad and so are you and so am I and one of the ways that we express our deep dependence upon our heavenly father is by stopping our work and resting because we're human and we need to both work and rest and then the final thing is refresh uh, on resurrection day Uh, Sunday Uh, So uh, Sunday, 
may for you be your, your rest day. That may well be the case. That may be the day that you rest uh, from your work, particularly. For many, that will be wisdom, won't it? If, if you have Sunday as your day of rest from work, then that means that you're more free and able to come uh, and meet with God's people on the Lord's Day, on a Sunday, on Resurrection Day. Uh, it won't always work out like that for all sorts of reasons um, that people need to, to, to work through. But it's important to have a day of rest, uh, and it's important to, to meet together on the Lord's Day, on, on Sunday, to, to worship God. And again, I think, to rebel. Uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about church like that. Church is deeply rebellious. We live in a, in a secular society that says, this is it. Right? This is it. You, me, the grass, the trees, the marquee, whatever. This is it. There is, there's nothing, there's nothing up there, there's nothing. And in the midst of all of that, we meet together and rebelliously say, no, there is a vertical dimension to reality. There is a God in heaven. And we're meeting together to worship him. You see how deeply rebellious that is? To come to church on Sunday and worship God. Now, I know you can worship God every day of the week. I know that, I know that. But God calls us to meet together, particularly to worship him, to focus on him, to, to, to remember, to, to refocus, to, to be renewed, to be patched up, to be reshaped uh, as we meet together. That's part of the reasoning why, uh, as you'll see with our plan for, for September or, or the future beyond that, uh, we'd like to see a return of the evening service um, because we think that's a great opportunity to do all of that, to rebel, <laughs> to, to refocus, to remember, to uh, be renewed, to be refreshed for the week ahead. Uh, Sunday uh, is the most ideal, most appropriate day to do that. And as we gather together like this, we say, he is Lord. It's the Lord's day and he is Lord in a world that thinks he most definitely is not. So I don't think that Sunday is uh, a Sabbath day. If you want to chat more, happy to chat about that. But it is the Lord's day. And as you do these three things, as you rest in Jesus, uh, as you rest one day a week, and as you refresh on resurrection day, you will find a potent antidote to life in a weary world. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us both work and rest. And Father, that you've spoken so clearly to us about this subject of rest. We are so dependent on you. We are frail human creatures. And we need to rest. And Father, we thank you that we can meet together on the Lord's Day and celebrate that Jesus is alive. That we don't need to run around anymore trying to justify ourselves because he died so that we could be justified and rose again. That we could stand before you as your children. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus and we worship him today on his day. Amen. As we close our time together, we're going to sing a couple of songs that help us just reflect a bit more on being still and resting in Jesus.
Let's pray as we stand. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus, the risen Saviour, the one in whom we can find deep and lasting and ultimate rest. Father, help us to rest in him, help us to rest wisely, and help us to use our time in a way which brings glory and honour to your name. Amen. Hi there, you've just watched one of our online services and we hope that it was helpful. Great that you could join us. If you want to find out more as a church, we have over 200 videos on our YouTube channel and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Maybe you want to get in touch with us where mickfieldec at gmail.com. As a church, we exist to introduce people to the Christian faith to help you investigate Jesus.